welcome to real knowledge club longevity summit today we have one of the truly a fascinating guest thought leaders india's one of the top 0.01% cardiologist and he is one of the doctors who actually helped my dad also while he had an heart attack or basically he did the angiogram and everything he was we were able to save him right and his expertise is like next level and he is the head of the department of cardiology in like manipal hospital and he was also like the topper uh, during his school college mbbs kasturi medical college he did and then he went on to do his md from all indian institute of medical science right like the number one medical college in the country and his achievement uh, including like dr apj abdul kalam has awarded him the best uh, physician award and he has over like two decades of years of experience is absolutely one of the greatest uh, doctors you can ever meet and today we are going to learn absolutely what is the secret to success if someone like a medical college how you can get there right for all the medical aspirants need aspirants secondly understanding the challenges in the indian medical um, industry third is like heart care because heart is one of the most important thing and the future of health and like best tips and everything he is known for his integrity transparency simplicity right let us all welcome dr ranjan shetty to the real knowledge club summit thank you thank you, you. akshay for uh... Uh, such a wonderful introduction you know it makes me really wonder whether <laughs> whether i deserve such a kind introduction thank you akshay happy to be here happy to answer questions yeah thank you so much sir for finally after like so many days we are able to get you right and doctor i would love to know about your back story right what was your vision motive what led you into the medical field and choose cardiology so yes actually so i think uh, uh, back then uh, we are all students and uh, you are studying and you are doing and then you are trying to choose which is your career i feel there were not many options then like you have now so most of us had to choose between being an engineer or being a doctor that's how it is but having said that choosing this uh, field uh, i don't regret it uh, even a bit you know i just love what we do i love the communication we have and i like talking to people i like understanding their part and this this really helps now while doing mbbs which i did in kasturba mangalore medical college kmc one of the good private medical college we had good teachers good mentors initially you know when you start i think everybody wants to become a cardiac surgeon when a doctor starts the only thing is heart surgeon heart surgeon but by i was in second year i realized you know i'm not a surgical guy i'm more a medical guy you know because these are two branches which diverge you can either be a surgeon or a physician you know that's how the whole field diverges so i chose that i have to become medicine and i was lucky enough to get into aims even when i was going there i was very clear i am going to do medicine no other branch in aims because you know aims is so reputed people think you know any branch because you are in aims you should take but i was more or less clear that a branch is more important than field while in medicine i just loved every sub speciality because it's so vast so many things then i thought since i wanted to become a cardiac surgeon you know cardiology fascinated me at that point and i became a cardiologist i did it from pga chandigarh i was lucky enough you know not to have a break during my education i got the next seat while i was doing the previous most of the time i had to do it you know i had to join the next seat one month later so there was no gap month or even a day and uh, i enjoy every bit of what i do and uh, really happy to interact with you i'll be happy to answer questions yeah absolutely that's incredible journey i believe you are also a canadian <laughs> yes, yes, yes 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 manglo that's amazing and uh, doctor like uh, what are the common traits which contributed you to becoming one of the top students in like school college then in aim right what it takes to be like number one topper in the medical college because many people are like aspiring to become doctor the neat aspirants everyone what you want to tell to them yes if i have to tell one thing to people is 
medicine is yes it's a respected it is a nice field but so are so many other fields so medicine is for people who, who you know you have to love this field otherwise it it's quite taxing right because even now if there is a heart attack i need to come in the night and my sleep is of no importance the patient's life is of the most importance so you right. need to have this attitude to become cardiologist or become a doctor money if it is for money if it is for respect i think this is not the field you can get it in any field lot of options now it's truly even now for those people who are very keen in this uh, subject because otherwise sometime you know the work and effort and burnout might make you frustrated so just to answer the whole question i think you need to love what you do you need to be good at what you do you need to keep thinking about what you do you know when like as a medical student anatomy when you study you have to be fascinated by it and you need to think about it later so medicine is a field for people who have people skill who can communicate to people who are interested in reading because your reading never ends for whom and money comes much later so it's a field where you know um uh, it it's for a set few people it's not for everybody i would suggest it's a very very good field to take absolutely absolutely love that and how many hours like you were uh, studying doctor during those days in your early 20s right to crack the aims of all those things <laughs> i know that is something you know uh, uh, people may not believe much but i was not a very uh, in the sense traditionally hard working student i was more like you know my reading when when i used to whenever i had to read it was more like the reading was divided into three parts imagine i read one chapter today i would read it today i would revise it tomorrow and i would tell some other person i would teach it to one more person so you know that's what i believed was more like a compact foundation which which would remain and once that happened most of the time i would never go back to that chapter even if the exam was 3 years away i would just go and write the answer so my method it may not be that traditional it was a slower pace of reading but whatever you read it is done that kind of reading i was uh, uh, i was lucky that um, studying was relatively easy for me compared to uh, many people i'm thankful uh, for, for uh, you know for for that um, uh, you know if i can call a skill or a gift i'm thankful to god for that i'm a believer uh, there's no doubt in my mind about a higher power and um, so my reading may not be the ideal way to replicate but yes people can have their own ways of reading today's era the reading is in any other way it is so much different from the even the time i used to read there are knowledge can come everywhere but there's one thing in medicine which is it not all medicine is taught in the book it's actually taught by the patient there's no doubt about that you have to be have a keen mind you have to have a sharp mind you need to be observant you need to ready to unlearn things which you thought was a gospel truth is no longer the truth you need to be ready to accept newer things which come comes you need to be very humble there is there's no other way to do medicine absolutely love that i believe like all of your hard work and your focus and learn apply share <laughs> right because of that you are able to get that yeah. that and doctor like what are the major challenges like you have seen in the healthcare and the medical hospitals in india don't they teach like preventive healthcare in like um, in the colleges and everything they do they do you know contrary to popular belief doctors don't want patients to be uh, you know unwell and treat them we are very very happy treating making them you know we are there to help them i think this becomes a paradox for a non doctor to think you know like other field it's more like you know if you want to buy a car you want somebody to have a need to buy a car but i can tell you that almost all doctors i know they're not happy when patients has pain and suffering and they come to us we are happy to uh, you know treat you and make you more comfortable so preventive healthcare 
healthy lifestyle is something which we talk all the time and we are happy not treating your disease if you are healthy we are happy to communicate with you we are happy to talk to you i feel the true uh, you know preventive healthcare is the way forward but just a note on um, on this actually preventive healthcare is not just preventive medical care the healthcare is beyond medical care it start with sanit you know the good water the good food nutrition the healthy habits it's way way beyond medical care it is equally a responsibility of every citizen the government of the country to every municipality to every every everyone it's not just doctor's responsibility absolutely absolutely love that it's like the most important thing right like the preventive healthcare being uh, uh, shown to like people and every doctor wants people to live long and uh, make sure that uh, they live long no doubt and uh, doctor the next question is like in india there are like well doctors work very long right and um, even for like 60 days like they just get like two days holidays and uh, i was speaking to some of the doctors they were telling in karnataka they are getting paid the least and uh, um, like uh, the surrounding and right now even there was a case in kolkata there was a big problem which happened right what do you think about the that issue being a senior doctor what what's your advice no i think it's a sad thing it's a sad thing that you know when a doctor starts earning it's already very late and the initial again they are not senior enough you know they need to spend 10 years you know by 35 when they start they considered very junior again so you need 10 more years to become something 45 so financial benefit for a doctor is very delayed it's little too late and little too less actually and uh, the work hours are uh, you know sometimes very taxing they are very long and there are less holidays and uh, you know working all the time and uh, getting less pay is considered a service so you know that's what people tend to do but when i look around i feel this is this is the sad part you know just to add i think you touched the right point see the country longevity is increasing now there is no doubt about that every year you know we are pushing and it's becoming better for whatever reason but uh, average doctor lives one decade less than the population looks very paradoxical right you know you want people to know yeah, about things because everyone longer. wonders that doctor yes. is like god to us and doctor has yes, to live yes. longer than common people yes, but yes. when i was seeing some interviews 60 to 63 years is what average doctor lives in india i was shocked yes. to hear that actually is <laughs> absolutely true akshay it's one decade lesser so when we talk to doctors you know we also have these kind of sessions with doctors we emphasize on that you know you're burning yourself up you also need a peace of mind it's very important for you to you got my point i have to have a life have a work life balance just like any other industry and it's also important that taking regular breaks are needed to do better at your job you know you know that lots of countries are five days a week some are even now four days or three and a half they they're discussing all this so that the productivity increases we need to understand fatigue is a real thing burning out is a real thing you you obviously have a lot of other ways to make become better and be healthy but it is shown in some uh, you know the statistics never lies right so it is true that doctors are uh, you know the quality of life and you know you are succumbing to more illness i'm sure um, you know i would like to talk to group of doctors about this and discuss with them and probably you know try to tell them that we need to live our life too absolutely absolutely that's one of the most important things because doctors they serve us like they are the most loyal profession and even they need a uh, uh, happiness holidays so that they also are able to relish with their family and uh, live a great life 
And doctor, what do you think about this? Like heart disease is one of the top most cause of death in India. Almost 27% of all the deaths is like heart attack, cardiovascular thing. And even when I was watching a podcast of Shiva Shankaran, so he also was uh, mentioning that if we low protein B, uh, right? If we keep it until like 30 to 40, almost all the heart attacks can be reduced and uh, we can predict before 10 years itself. Yes. So yes, heart attack is very much the number one killer. And countries like India, which struggle with so many other issues, even in this country, heart attack is the number one killer. So world over, it is number one. How do we prevent it? It's a lifestyle disease. So you'll have to do more than one thing to make it right. So that includes exercise, diet. One factor which, which you are mentioning is LDL. You know, people know it as LDL. It's also called as lipoprotein B. Lower the number, better it is. That's how it works because it's the fuel which burns down everything. So you might fire it, but if you take out the fuel, the fire doesn't spread. So lower the better. But unfortunately, and you have to start early, you know, because it's a very, very slow process. So 10 years later, 20 years later. But unfortunately, this number, whether you call it FOB or LDL, is genetically derived. So most of the time, you are, whatever you do, whatever you eat, you eat nothing. Still, you could have a number which is which is bad. And there are patients who need to take tablets to reduce it. But, you know, as, um, as a uh, race, we are anti-tablet. You know, people, it's very difficult to tell people that, uh, you know, it's important to keep the LDL down, especially if you are diabetic or if you have other risk factors. But, um, but people may or may not take that advice. They want to do diet. They want to do exercise. But 90% of your LDL or ApoB lipoprotein is actually genetically driven. So unless you starve, even fasting doesn't help, the numbers remain high. And if a doctor decides to treat you, you need to take tablet. And you need to take it for life. Again, taking for two months doesn't help. Because it get, it postpones the heart attack by two months. How does two months work at all when, when we are talking about, you know, these kind of things? Absolutely. Absolutely. And doctor, what do you think about, uh, like, currently right now, uh, um, like, uh, so many people are, like, addicted to, like, smoking, alcohol, and, like, eating, like, a lot of processed food and all these things, Right. And do these also uh, contribute to the heart attack? Yeah, I, I I would partially agree with you on this because, you know, it's just a continuation of what we discussed. Smoking, definitely bad. When we have youngsters with a heart attack, almost always, 90% of them are smokers. Alcohol does increase heart attack. There's no doubt. But whether you eat veg or non-veg or whether you eat oil or fried may not matter. You know, the dictum is, as I told you, because it's a genetically derived number, diet itself doesn't have too much oil. You eat anything, body can convert it into a cholesterol. So it's very important to reduce uh, LDL cholesterol, not by diet, maybe by exercise, but more by medicine if it is recommended to you. So the why, why, did we, why is this a concept? Because cholesterol, what is there in your blood, is definitely bad. That's what we started with, actually. Yes. But then that comes because of any food you eat. It's your body which converts any food you eat into cholesterol. So you don't need to have eat cholesterol to have blood cholesterol. So egg yellow is okay. Non-veg is okay. Fried is okay. But everything has to be within, you know, it's not that okay means it. the quantity also matters. But, uh, you know, uh, rice carbohydrate are a problem so it's important to reduce them absolutely absolutely and doctor for the people who have this cholesterol right how can they bring down what they have to do because it is also a factor which you are telling absolutely this is the question i want to answer that cholesterol is genetic cholesterol comes from your own liver and all of you have seen it you know there would be a person who's eating only curd rice and his ldl may be 190 LDL, which is ApoB. Somebody who is eating everything and looks obese, but the LDL could be 108. 
because it is genes which decide the number now there are so diet has absolutely no role but low carb diet is what we advise do not ask which oil what oil it really doesn't matter exercise which indians actually lack has to be done it could be 30 to 40 minutes a day for 4 to 5 days a week and then there are numbers about ldl cholesterol which are bad triglyceride doesn't matter total cholesterol doesn't matter ldl or apob matters if your LDL is above 190, it is abnormal for everybody. You could try diet exercise for one month, two months. If it doesn't come down, the doctor will prescribe a pill. You have to take it for life. On tablets, it really comes down. But then you can't shove the tablet because it's the tablet which brought it down. Short-term tablets have no role. Diabetics, again, it is more important to control sugar uh, you know bp and cholesterol than controlling sugar itself all diabetics should look for co-thieves one thief is diabetes what about other thieves which are ganging up if you can decrease that other thief it works well exercise definitely has a role and people should use it absolutely absolutely that's right and doctor, what lifestyle changes one has to make to impact on um, um, heart health, right? You must have seen like so many patients almost every single day who you are doing so many operations and everything. What is the common pattern like you have seen with the people? No, I think uh, it's a lifestyle disease and people should. I think if I have to give one or two suggestions specific to us Indians, that would be, you know, we are very carb-liking, uh, uh, you know, we like carb-liking uh, 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 race or, uh, uh, you know, who, who like. So it's very important to decrease carbohydrate in your food. See, when we used to be a manual laborer kind of job, when people used to go to farm and work, it's okay to eat so much rice with little rasam and little pickle because you need that fuel for the work. Today, we don't do that. We sit here, we talk. So you don't need so much carbohydrate. So reduce carb, make it one third. Have more vegetables for fiber. Have 10 to 15% fat. Protein is seriously deficient in Indian meal. You know, whether you're vegetarian or non, because you're non-veg means you're just taking one piece of something so it's deficient just make sure you increase either vegetarian or non-vegetarian protein that's important the second again as a race we are always busy and we have no time for we are always hurrying and we have no time for anything and what actually gets compromised is exercise so it's important that people actually do exercise now again it's not jumping into gym or doing everything it is about doing something versus doing nothing do something do some exercise make it a habit put it in your uh, this one i think that works well absolutely absolutely love that and doctor what are the most important things one has to do right if they have to live for like 100 years like longevity the main theme of today's summit <laughs> i know i know akshay you have been very fascinated with longevity and uh, you know i've seen some of your you know, previous episodes where you do discuss, yes, I feel if I have to answer, uh, I mean, it might look a little contradictory to your basic concept. I think it's not about living 100 years. It's about quality of life. It's important people have quality of life. Now, how do we, you know, it's not long of it. It's not about 100 on a ventilator. 100, which is this. Now, what are the things which increase quality and quantity of life? I would concentrate. One, obviously, low-carb diet helps. Good protein intake helps. Exercise regularly. Again, you know, extreme exercise are dangerous. If you're running marathons, if you're doing kickboxing, those kind of extreme things, or, you know, they are, again, dangerous. They don't live longest. But moderate exercise, like doing something, having a schedule of walking is good. You know, doing uh, something like twice a week, a muscle building exercise, which could be going to gym and doing circuit training or doing something like yoga. Managing life stress-free as much as possible. Having sleep hygiene. You know, these things help. You know, it's visible on face. People who exercise regularly actually look younger. 
because there is something called as physiological age, not just your chronological age, not from your birth date. But people can look younger if they exercise regularly, if they're careful with what they eat, where they're decreasing the total calorie intake and decreasing the, uh, you know, these things help a lot. Absolutely, absolutely. Love that, doctor. And doctor, how does one perform like CPR, right? If someone gets a heart attack at like home, airport or like bus station and there is no doctor nearby or like cardiologist, right? How can we save our friends and family? See, I think CPR is a necessary skill. If you look at uh, countries like Denmark, 85% population are CPR trained. At Manipal Hospital, since 2018, every year for World Heart Day, we do an activity on CPR. So we have been doing for five, six years. Last year, our aim was to increase the CPR awareness in Bangalore from 2% to 3%, 1% more. So here, we offer CPR training. We have made it simple. There are apps now, there are QR codes, which we do at Manipal Hospital. So I feel if somebody is interested in CPR, they should contact. We'll be happy to train. There are my own videos which are there in online, which are discussing about CPR. I think the message what we should give here, Akshay, is that it's an essential skill. Like, like, you know, if you want to save yourself or loved one, it can't be somebody else because CPR has to be started within two minutes. So if you want to treat people, learn CPR, it's a simple skill. It can make a difference. I had to do CPR twice in flight, you know, when we are flying. Because arrest and attacks can occur anytime. Rather than asking us, what is the first aid we should do? If I have a chest pain, should I take this medicine, that medicine? Should I carry anything in my pocket? Take a oath and learn CPR. Do CPR. That's what you should be doing. Absolutely. One can learn by even like going on YouTube or like seeing right exactly how to do like CPR. Yes, yes. We have our own this one. You can contact uh, Manipal Hospital. You'll get all the information. We'll be happy to train you because this is our dream. Actually, our dream is that whole of city of Bangalore at least knows CPR. Because without CPR, when a person arrests, not attack, arrest, if they have collapsed, only 7% survive. Whereas with CPR, 33% more survive. That means around half of them survive if you do a right CPR. Got it. CPR means like we have to press on the chest and the... Yes, uh... yes. If I have to tell you simply, most important is compression. So you are okay. supposed to put your hand over each other, bend mm -hmm. on the person on the lower chest and compress it 100 times a minute. It's okay. a difficult process. So always call for help. Mouth-to-mouth -mouth breathing is not essential. It's more important to compress and that's the this. And it's very simple. It can be learned. Got it. Absolutely. Love that. And doctor, like how is right now the Indian healthcare, right? Well, because uh, some people think going to USA or like Dubai or UK has like more advanced things and we can meet doctors. You being in so many places, what's your thoughts on Indian healthcare? So I think Indian healthcare is very good and the world is aware of it. You know, it's not just the world itself is aware that the healthcare here is extremely good and there is quality healthcare. So if I have to tell you, if you compare the countries according to GDP, you know, that's how everybody compares. <laughs> Higher GDP countries do spend a lot on healthcare because they could afford to. and They have a premium healthcare. We may be an exception here because our GDP is not high. Yes, economy is growing. That's amazing. But per capita GDP is not that high as of now. But for an equivalent GDP, we are far, far superior in healthcare. So our healthcare here is comparable to what we, what US or UK can give. And I'm very, very sure about it. But then there is an urban-rural divide, which is in India, that the urban get all the healthcare as if they're in US. But there are rural where even drugs like aspirin may not be available. So I think using technology now, using training and using all the, you know, drone and other things, we should make sure that this urban rural divide is decreasing. I see it already. Last decade, I've seen cat labs now in almost all districts of Karnataka. 
and each district has more than 10 cardiologists now there are districts with 20 30 districts with eight nine cat labs which is which is amazing if you ask me i feel this is the way to go ahead we are very good we are skilled but just this urban rural divide is what we need to work on absolutely love that and doctor tell us about the current infrastructure at the manipal hospital right how much time it takes if someone has like a heart attack or like any problem how much time does it take a doctor to solve it was this like in america yes. or like uk manipal hospital is obviously a state of working here and uh, you know it does provide state of art care like today I was talking to a patient who is a young girl who is on ECMO, which is very advanced cardiac care, uh, you know, heart lung support. We are even talking about transplant for this patient. And when I talk to the relatives, the, all that I tell is, even if you're in US, this is the treatment you would get, and we are going to give you the best. Now that's amazing. Uh, so once you reach our hospital door. We're able to do everything what U.S. does with same quality, same commitment, and same good. But question is, how many can reach our door? And how difficult is it to reach because of the traffic of Bangalore itself? So when you talk about healthcare, which we started the topic, it is more than medical care. Healthcare is the topic to be discussed. I'm sure people like you who interview, you know, people across the spectrum, can do a difference here. Healthcare is not medical care. Medical care, India is the best. There's no doubt. Whether it's doctor, whether it's most of the instrument, India is the best. But healthcare is also, it's not about reaching Manipal Hospital, right? How do you reach it? So there are a lot more, you know. There are places where infant mortality rate, which is the indicate of the general health, is reduced only because good roads were built from that village to the nearest hospital. The urban-rural divide, what I was talking, is not just about building the rural things well. It's also having good connectivity. But here, I can tell you, the country is changing. Roads are becoming better. The whole world is changing. I'm, and I'm, we have, I mean, you and me both are actually very fortunate to be in, uh, uh, you know, this uh, uh, time of, you know, where where everything is rapidly changing. You and me can't predict how the healthcare will be in next five years. Because most of those predictions which we predict for five years is going to be true for just two years, you know? So things are changing very rapidly. Absolutely. Love that. I love the conversation which you had with even my mentor, Shraddha Sharman. You were telling for a tea take your cousin in London or something there to wait for one month. Whereas in yeah. India, like within like day or so, we can actually easily meet a doctor and get the teeth removed. <laughs> now that. And doctor, if you were to become the health minister of India tomorrow, what would the changes like you want to bring to the country for the prosperous and healthy nation? <laughs> Yes, yes, yeah. Thank you, Akshay. You know, that, that is a, I mean, although I've not really thought about it in that angle, but I feel this would be the most challenging question. You know, if I have to be uh, this one, yes, I would concentrate much, much more on preventive health care. And I would concentrate on health care, not just medical care. One, yes, the present government is actually trying a lot on health and uh, the way the say the pandemic was managed was amazing you know again that is where we showed that you know although people think we are a poor nation how well we could manage a pandemic by definition pandemics are difficult to manage there is no doubt but i feel as a country we did much much better than many countries now having said that how do we make things better I feel the only way is where we combine education and healthcare together. Right now, if you see, majority of the so-called good work or high-class work is actually happening in private. 80% of these happen in private, 20% happen in premier institute. So one way is to have a collaboration. Now, it's not possible to do everything by somebody or one system. 
it's not possible to infuse so i think it's important that we have a bigger collaboration between both private and government doctors and hospitals need as a race very committed to health care we do not want patients as i told you so it's important we work on that we also may help the responsibility of a patient it's important people realize that they are responsible for health you know when people eat pani puri and have diarrhea and then come and ask us that this tablet does it have side effect we feel bad you know because most of the disease are brought by yourself so you you know we need to involve them we need to have healthy activities we need to have you know maybe more parks where people could wear control pollution and then make sure that every person in the country is somehow insured because cost is still a concern we did discuss about extremely good healthcare available but it comes at a price whereas in west the price is paid by the insurance company and who are not insured is paid by the government but here we still have 80% people who are not probably fully insured yes now there are government schemes and it's much much better than say decades before but still i think we need to do a lot more work make sure somehow every individual is medically insured and no person is denied the treatment because of lack of health so there there are states which have done extremely well there are states which are doing extremely well i think if something has to be free in this country it has to be health apart Absolutely. from air and water nothing else should be free you know people should work for it right as even uh, navin jain was telling health is the ultimate wealth no matter how much money we earn if we don't have a good health all the money whatever we spend however we are not going to take it with us if we are healthy we can uh, live long and do a great purposeful thing so that and doctor does a life partner play an important role in career and health and heart and everything i i think so i think so there's not if there is no peace at home there's no way you can do anything great in your life i think your partner really plays a very very important role you need a home to come back when you're tired you need a partner to discuss now you know uh, that's one more thing you always need people with whom you can discuss your ideas find uh, things there are people who need to be um, you know support you i feel uh, uh, it really matters to have a good partner here absolutely and i'm remembering that the conversation dr hegide the cardiologist he was telling every day like the more laughter like the more we laugh almost laughter kills all the diseases right like we tend to be more happier so that and um, doctor like what are the favorite books like which you will recommend for all the health enthusiasts about like card or uh, like cardiologist or like health heart attack right to avoid and everything um books may or may not be needed because the concepts are very simple here it's about you know not not eating too much it's about exercising it's about relaxing it's more about managing stress so i wouldn't recommend of any particular books because also you know books have too much of author in them you know there is a bias which invariably creeps in and uh, if you read one you, you know there is a bias which comes correct, all correct. of us are, have our own perception and it's, it's important to get a more general idea when you have absolutely and and doctor in future if i like uh, uh, bring all the health longevity experts would you be interested to come and share your views on the, this thing in the event yeah yeah, yeah. definitely definitely i believe in physiological uh, aging i believe in uh, you know reverse aging to some extent but i do not believe in unnecessary longevity yeah <laughs> because you know whatever said and done death is a certainty sometimes right. important to accept death and live your life it's important it's cheating that is just not possible correct correct yeah in spirituality it's always told right what is written is going to happen yes, but yes. we have to make sure that like we do the right thing and the like we have to obey the land or and the rules of the god right whatever yes, sometimes yes. 
and that was amazing and doctor for all the people who are watching this if they have any questions want to reach out to you right and where are you available if they want to book consulting right facebook instagram linkedin yes i do have a facebook i'm not in insta i'm not very active in linkedin okay uh, uh, so i think this um, uh, you know this tells me that i have to be more approachable to people so i'll work on these and maybe one of the future talks i'll tell you exactly where to contact right now if you have to contact me it is more in you know you need to contact in nepal hospital yeah <laughs> yeah absolutely <laughs> now that thank you so much doctor for your incredible wisdom for the last 40 minutes it was truly a mind blowing like a master class about like uh, preventive healthcare heart attack the secrets to live long and everything right before we conclude for everyone who is watching this real knowledge club what you want to tell yes so thank you akshay for first having me here and uh, we have been interacting for a long time and i always cherish our interaction Okay. Uh, if i need to tell uh, people about uh, anything it's about enjoy what you do remember there's a finite time even if akshay pushes it to say 100 years still it is a finite time so you need to live your life you need to be happy and be good at what you do uh, again be very sincere in your work give your 100 percent when you are you know doing something take pleasure out of what you do and if you're in a wrong branch it's not too late to change your options but enjoy what you do i think that's that's the key when you do that that's what uh, you know you were trying to say the laughter being the best when you enjoy what you do things become much easier absolutely absolutely thank you dr ranjan shetty for uh, your incredible wisdom and everyone who is watching this if you have any problem or like if you have any cousins in bangalore and if you think uh, they need any heart check up do come to like manipal hospital and make sure that like you meet uh, dr ranjan shetty and take his advice always learning from the best experts is like the key and uh, do let us know what's your three biggest takeaway post it in the comments tag your friend post it on linkedin facebook instagram and thank you everyone for watching and thank you doctor see you soon again bye bye thank you have a great day bye see you